It is the final day of Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson's Supreme Court confirmation hearings. That's right. Today, the panel is hearing testimonies from numerous outside witnesses, including legal experts and civil rights leaders. Representatives of the American Bar Association lauded the qualifications of Judge Jackson earlier today. They also rejected claims Judge Jackson was biased in her child pornography cases after Republicans attacked her sentencing approach to these cases. An ABA committee member acknowledged the, quote, surprise fact that the association found zero criticisms of Judge Jackson to report. We talk about defense counsel. You know, many defense counsel are former prosecutors. When we talk about liberals and conservatives, they're defense counsel that are liberal and conservatives. And so when we speak to these attorneys, um, they have different perspectives. And it is surprising um, it, that unanimously the bar uh, appreciates Judge Jackson sees that she has high competency, integrity, and temperament. Judge Jackson is back on Capitol Hill today to meet with senators who will soon vote on her nomination to the Supreme Court. Joining us now for more on this is CBS News legal contributor Jessica Levinson. Jessica, always great to see you. Today we're not hearing from Judge Jackson. How important is it that outside testimony in comparison to questioning the judge herself? Well, not as important, but let's remember that this is a Senate that is so closely divided and we are increasingly having votes on judicial nominees, including, of course, Supreme Court nominees that are much closer than they used to be, all of which to say everything matters. The whole ball game here is either trying to keep the three Republican senators who voted in favor of Judge Jackson when she was nominated for the D.C. Court of Appeals, um, and or to try and pick up more. We're talking about very small margins here. So to the extent that some of the witnesses today are helping to either bolster her claims to support her or to throw more criticism that could give some Republicans cover to vote against her, I think it does make a difference. You know, Jessica, you point out that there were those three Republicans that voted for appointment as a federal judge. But of course, we know that those hearings don't get as much uh, play as as this one so you have to take into account that of course these republicans are speaking to their constituents uh as well so considering all of that and multiple outside witnesses testifying both for and against jackson who do you think has made an impact so far and is there anyone we should keep an eye on well, so I think in terms of today, actually, it's the people that you featured in the introduction, the members of the American Bar Association who said, we have interviewed hundreds of attorneys. I believe that they spoke personally to 250 lawyers. They talked to defense counsel. They talked to prosecutors. They talked to other people who have worked with Judge Jackson. And they said, there is simply no there there when it comes to these allegations that she either wants to reform the criminal justice system, an allegation we heard again today, that she's soft on people who violate child pornography laws. And so for me, that was powerful because it was a very strong fact check of something that we frankly heard a lot about over the last two days. And it allowed somebody other than her to explain there's no perception in the legal community. There's no perception among those who work with her that this is the reality. Um, now, how many people will that sway? Again, so many times I think we feel in these confirmation hearings that the cast is, the die is largely cast, again, except just with respect to those people who are kind of wobblers on the margin. Well, as Tanya mentioned, mm -hmm. they found zero criticisms, right? right. Pretty impressive reputation there. Jessica, what happens next? After the public hearings end today, what are the next steps in this process? So the next steps are that we heard today that members of the committee are basically going to fight over paper. They're going to fight over whether or not they can get even more information when it comes to some of Judge Jackson's sentencing decisions. You heard Senator Durbin say this morning, I have concerns about the confidentiality of that information. We have a lot of information. I believe he, it was today that he again reminded his colleagues that this is now her third Senate confirmation hearing, her second, or excuse me, her third to the federal bench. She was a district court judge, a court of appeals judge, and now for the Supreme Court. Uh, I think that there will be a vote in the Judiciary Committee that's scheduled for April 4th. And then what we've heard is that they plan to vote, the full Senate plans to vote to confirm her by April 8th, which is before they leave for their holiday break. And that's the timeline coming up. This could be wrapped up rather quickly. <laughs> All right. Well, Jessica Levinson, thank you so much. As always, we appreciate your legal expertise. Thank you.